Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is me nom 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 069 returning with our C++ SDL game tutorial and we are continuing our pong game. So in the last tutorial we we moved our paddle. We moved our player paddle. So in this tutorial we need to move our ball. So let's talk about our ball and I'll bring up paint just so we can visualize it when we're working on it. So what do we want our ball to do? So here's our ball, and we want our ball to randomly move, boom, bounce off here, and then if it comes off the back of the screen, we want it to reset back to this position. And then we want it to randomly go and bounce off the side of the screen, and just bounce any which way, and like just be bouncing all around the screen. So let's implement that. So what are we going to need to do that? We're going to need some random numbers which means more include library so include std lib and actually that's wrong std lib dot h and we need to include c time so the std lib gives us our random function in the seed random and the c time makes it so we can seed our random number of the time so in our load game first things first we need to seed our random numbers and what does seeding our random numbers do oh, uh, sorry <laughs> excuse me uh, seeding our random numbers we are um every time if we ran this uh, random number program uh, ran our random number we called a new random number it give us the same ones like every time we ran the program so when we seed it with our time by s rand time no seed with the time it'll give us a new random number every time and this will give us an error uh, not an error but a warning um, this will return a value that may possibly lose data but it's not a big deal don't worry about it it will just give you an error and if you have your compiler set as a uh, treat errors as warnings just turn that off so that way you can keep working so we're seeding our random numbers so we get truly random numbers and now we're going to need a new function it is going to be int get random number int high int low and this is just going to return rand the rand function that's in std live it's just rand now we need to percent sign we need to mod our high mod our high because it'll give us like a value all the way up to like 999,999 so mod our high plus our low so this will get random numbers for us so we have our get random numbers. Now we need to go to our. Uh, we need to make two more variables. We need our x int x velocity and y velocity for our ball. Int x val, int y val. So we come to our logic, and well, first we need to give them a load game. So now we need to give our x val and our y val a random value here. So um, we want our random values to be between zero and three three sounds good no two three is fast two yeah so our x val will equal get random if I can spell it right the function we just made random number our high two and our low of zero and same with our y, y val equals get random number two comma zero and actually uh, this here we give our random number so our x velocity and our y velocity is given a random number now there's better ways to do this but this is this is the simplest way I'm trying to keep it simple with this first game tutorial that we're doing so in our logic every frame we need to um, add our x val to our um, x velocity so uh, add our x val to our x value on the ball and add our y velocity to the y value on our ball so ball dot y plus equals y velocity and I like to do the x's first we'll just move that so ball dot x plus equals x velocity and I just figured out something we want them to go negative two we want our ball to move in a negative direction as well so we'll give it a random uh, area between two and negative two so now we run it start debugging and our ball will 
just start flying towards, there it is. You see our ball move off the screen? Well now we need our ball to bounce. So that's adding logic for that. So if our y, if the y value of our ball becomes less than zero, what do we need to do? We need to flip our, uh, our y velocities, right? So if ball, ball dot y is less than zero, if our ball dot y is less than zero, and actually less than one, because we want to flip it, we're going to do y vel equals negative y vel. We're just reversing our y velocity. And now, if our ball dot y is greater than our height, 600, 600, then we're going to flip it, and that's not gonna work. And I'll tell you why. Because it's just like our keeping our paddle on the screen. We need to add our height. Plus ball dot height. If our ball dot y plus our ball dot height is greater than instead of 600, 599. So we have that one pixel of padding. We will make our y val our is it y val? Yes, our y val equal negative y val. So now what will happen is when we run this game, we run our game currently. It'll bounce up there and then it'll come back down and bounce. So now we need to make it so to check when our ball goes off the screen. We need to reset our ball. And since our ball is going to be getting reset a lot because of, uh, because like every time a ball goes off the side, we're going to have to reset our ball. Every time like a point scored, we need to reset ball. So avoid reset ball. Reset ball. And this this will just be used in our logic function. We just need a ball dot x to equal ball x is it what's the name of that global yep and our ball dot y equals ball y and now we need to we need to give it a random our random velocities and let's move that give them the random velocities out of here we'll just cut this out and we'll just move it here and here's something cool since at the start of the game we want to give our ball its random velocity and reset our ball, we're just going to do reset ball at the bottom here. So reset ball, we'll just call that in. And that'll just be redoing this, but it's not a big deal. So we reset our ball, we give them the random velocity. Now we need to determine when we need to reset the ball. Well, we'll start up paint, not code blocks, paint. When our, this is this side, when our ball, this, goes past zero we need to reset the ball and we'll do the scores later we'll do that when the ball goes off that side we need to reset the score when the ball goes off the opposite side the AI side we, we need to reset the score and let me X out code box so how do we implement that it's easy it's just like just like our uh, keeping the paddle on the Y part of the screen except we're just changing it to X values so in our void logic if if our ball dot x becomes less than one, if our ball dot x becomes less than one, we're just gonna reset our ball. Just that's all. We just call that function in. Now, also, we need to check to the opposite side. Our ball dot x, and because it's on the opposite side, we need to make sure our height, our width's in there accounted for. I mean, so plus ball dot width becomes greater than seven ninety nine reset ball we'll just reset our ball and actually because the maximum value can be two we'll make these both two so we run our game now and we have our ball boom boom and it's moving more towards that side all the time I do not like it I'd like it to go to the other side occasionally so what we can do to help fix that I think would be to uh, make our reset ball we'll make the high four this might work hopefully it does so we run it hopefully so it'll come here it'll come there and it's still going to that side and it it broke we'll just we'll put it two and zero so that way it always goes towards our AI first this is this is kinda tweaking work here and why is that no? Why'd that just cut out on us? 
what's going on here let's insert a breakpoint let's insert a breakpoint and see what's going on we are we'll do it at both of our reset balls see what happens because that's a little funky I don't like that okay reset ball let's go see all of our variables so our reset ball we come up here and our get what's our x velocity and our y velocity zero huh let's remove those I'm sorry about this guys let's see what was going on huh let's go back to two negative two and see if that fixes it our high and our low yep that's right perhaps this works now it's going a little funky but more towards towards, towards the same side each time but we'll just make our player have a little bit rougher of a time playing it. I don't know why that did that and uh, I feel like trying to figure it out right now would break up the pace of the tutorial and I think this tutorial has gone on long enough as is. Next time we'll do the collision between the AI paddle, our paddle and the ball and also with the AI paddle so we'll do collision. Anyways let's go over what we did. We set up our X and our Y velocity for the ball. Well, let's start up at the top. We included the STD live for our random function and for our time function. So that way we could get random numbers and see the random numbers more randomly, if that makes sense. We created a get random number with a high and a low variable. And it would return a random number that was between our high and low, including them. And then we ha created a reset ball function that would put the ball X and the ball Y back at the center and then it would re-get new velocities for our ball. In our load game, we all we did was we seeded our random times, so our, so our random numbers were more random, and we reset our ball to give it its velocities. And then in the logic area, we just made our ball move, and if it went off of the, off the upper and lower part of the screen, we just made it bounce back down, and we made it so if it went out, off the other side of the screen it reset the ball so thanks for watching i'm um, this tutorial is a little bit shoddier than the other ones but i promise next time will be better anyways thanks for watching remember to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys later